Hey, hi everyone. This is Saurav Paltani. I welcome you all to the second video series of understanding the Amazon Web Services and our tips on cracking the Certified Solution Architect examination. So, in this video, I would be taking over over the different web services, the different services which are provided by Amazon, uh, the use cases of all these services, and the way you are going to utilize all these services and the major key points in these services which are necessary for cracking the certified solutions architect exam so yeah let's begin yeah so w first of all i'd like to uh, help you all understand why cloud why cloud computing you know uh, gartner is one of the biggest international research organizations and it has made certain predictions uh, you know embrace cloud or you die you know majority of the cloud providers have a huge scope and you uh, after becoming a certified solution architect would have huge opportunities in cloud then the public cloud market the public cloud is estimated to grow more than 131 billion dollars there are different domains there are different services which are coming into the cloud uh, different vendors are bringing in their own services and right from infrastructure as a service software as a service there are different domains which are coming in uh, like is i can call it lads identity and access management as a service yes the security as a service so as a service model is day and day mm, uh, becoming very prominent so amazon if you look at the domain in which it is providing uh, the main core components are in the iaas domain that is infrastructure as a service amazon provides you with different kinds of infrastructures right from your machines provisioning your virtual machines you know having your block storages having your object storages <coughs> different kinds of services uh, you know it's not just amazon uh, different cloud providers are in, uh, nowadays in a huge race where they are investing heavily let's have an example of ibm which is rolling out its data centers even in india it has uh, uh, rolled out data center and it expects to uh, invest about more than 1.2 billion dollars so yeah so it's all about provisioning your infrastructure on the go scaling your resources in order to meet the high increasing capacity requirements then it's never just provisioning and scaling you also need to optimize the utilization of your resources the utilization of your infrastructure so <coughs> these are the main four domains around which the cloud computing revolves and i'll try to highlight which are the different services which address all these four domains right from monitoring on cloud how do you provision different components on cloud what are the different facilities which are available on amazon basically to you know, scale your resources and what you can do what you have to ensure to optimize the utilization of your resources so basically these are the more important four pillars on which the cloud computing stands <coughs> so yeah uh, if we talk about the amazon infrastructure amazon has a global infrastructures of more than 9 data centers across the globe it has uh, a huge coverage across it provides its services across the different domains different verticals you can have its services across compute across the storage and across the databases this is the general architecture we can uh, look at there is a aws global infrastructure which is laid down uh, and they provide all the different aws services on top of it where you can deploy your own applications you can access the different amazon web services integrate those web services into your applications scale your applications as per the need and have a you know optimal utilization of resources in order to meet it's in a better sense it's outsourcing the worries of infrastructures outsourcing the management of your infrastructures to a third party vendor like amazon and concentrating more on the development of the applications and increasing the roi so these are some of the couple of benefits which i find uh, by using in general the cloud computing services which are like uh, 
almost zero upfront investment you know uh, you don't have to invest as such in your physical environment uh, you know you get your infrastructure in minutes you just have to specify your requirements uh, more efficient utilization of resources you can always fine tune your resources as per your need uh, you can always scale up your resources when you uh, expect a high load on your machines uh, based on the quantum of load you can add in more machines you can remove more machines you can even automate this entire process uh, and the beauty of this is you are never uh, built for the entire infrastructure cost you just pay for what you are utilizing so that that's what that's where it uh, comes as uh, pay as you go model and yes and what benefit it brings to you as a developer uh, or as a uh, cloud enterprise is the reduced time to market you know it certainly uh, helps you uh, in increasing your agility uh, taking your product to the market very fast so you know these are the general benefits of utilizing the cloud services now uh, there are some technical benefits like okay you can have automation on top of the cloud services in order to automate most of the things uh, you don't have to actually go and configure the things on each and the individual uh, nodes each and the individual machines you can have a second portal which does all the things you can scale your resources on your demand you can have a automation of that you can automate your deployment activities uh, you can even have a, a disaster recovery mechanisms in place wherein Uh, you are always assured that your infrastructure always gives you a hundred percent uptime. Even if there are critical, uh, you know, natural disasters, if they occur, you can ensure that uh, your secondary infrastructure takes up the load and the things are automated. So this is possible only if you have your data centers, your infrastructures on cloud. Imagine the whole lot of things. If you had a physical environment, it is it is damn difficult to get things in place. so yeah moving on to the main topic uh, i would like to uh, give the introduction of different web services which are provided by amazon in order to address the needs which we uh, discussed uh, the uh, there are uh, services more than 90 services which are provided by amazon uh, web services in different domains in different verticals right from in computation in databases in storage Uh, they have their service offerings uh, and uh, as you can see uh, there is some of the uh, services are really the foundation services if you go for amazon ec2 or amazon s3 amazon ec2 is a compute elastic compute cloud it is a virtual machine which is provided by uh, amazon which you can uh, deploy your application on you have a complete flexibility in choosing the operating system you have complete flexibility in choosing the size of the machines the number of cores the number of processors the hard disk you want to attach to it it's up completely up to you amazon s3 amazon s3 is a kind of a object store where you can uh, you know save your uh, you know uh, images javascript files uh, you know different kind of objects can be stored uh, there so uh, these are the uh, along with that you we do have some uh, different uh, foundation level services if you see uh, like the vpc which is a virtual network that is available on public cloud which you get a complete flexibility to uh, network the different components configure the routers have a private dedicated uh, virtual environment where you where you uh, configure the different subnets you get a complete control over the routing of your data routing of your requests uh, then uh, you do have a load balancer service called amazon elastic load balancer for load balancing across your uh, application servers uh, these are the basic level services on top of that uh, you we do, uh, amazon does provide a set of services for analytics like emr data pipeline kinesis there are different uh, databases which are provided by amazon of the on the shell of like the relational databases services the non relational databases uh, uh, you know database services you have offerings like dynamodb you know rds elastic cache redshift 
so ultimately it boils down to what are your application requirements and put the right components of the shelf for your application uh, in right in terms of cdn it does provide you with uh, different uh, services you can configure uh, maybe you are a building application for your mobile you can uh, use the mobile services which are available your apply provide uh, developing application for a desktop application there are different requirements all i want to make a point is it completely depend on the kind of application you have the kind of requirements you have there are there is a huge array of applications uh, services which are available and uh, using the right kind of services for the right kind of job is what is necessary and this is one of also a important consideration where you need to know which services are available and they can be utilized in which way and this is a important criteria also for the certification exam because it ultimately tests down your skills in how you effectively you can put all these services in place so yep this is what the basic overview of amazon web services which are provided in different domains uh, right uh, you know in the basic services for compute for storage for networking as we discussed there are on top of the services like uh, for analytics like emr data pipeline and kinesis there are also monitoring services like cloudwatch so in our next series of videos we'll try to understand what are the basic and what are the most important services which you can have a look at if you are preparing for the certified solutions architect examination so yeah uh, looking forward to for next videos